Easter. A time for fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies. And then there are the weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? Hey, GSM, welcome back to our third and final week of our series, Happy Easter. It's kind of crazy that we are just four days away from Easter. It's kind of crazy. It just kind of stuck up on us as the coronavirus keeps on going on, the, the calendar year keeps on going on, and here we are just four days away from celebrating and, and just having an opportunity to praise God for what happened on Friday with the death of Christ and then Sunday with the resurrection of Christ. But before we dive into that, I would love to start with a story, if you would allow me. Uh, it has absolutely nothing to do with Easter, but it has uh, hopefully everything to do with kind of where we're going to go today. And so uh, back when I was in eighth grade, take, take, yourself, take myself back to eighth grade Tony, uh, and I claimed I had my first ever girlfriend as an eighth grade kid. Uh, whether you think uh, eighth graders are too, too young to date or not, like I th- I, as an eighth grade kid, I thought I was on top of the world. I got my first ever girlfriend, and I remember I asked her to be my girlfriend. Her name was Jessie, and she, we were in the hallway at the end of school. It was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I asked her to be my girlfriend, and she said yes. And in that moment, I felt like I was on top of the world. Well, this was a Thursday, and the very next day, uh, we, we went to Hershey Park, actually, uh, for a band competition and band and choir competition. So we got on the buses and we went off to Hershey Park and she and I were both in the choir. And so we went off and we had our competitions and then we had the opportunity to enjoy the rest of the day uh, going on rides and just having a good time at Hershey Park. Well, uh, at the end of the day, unfortunately, uh, Jesse, right before we got back on the buses, uh, Jesse actually broke up with me. (laughs) Uh, And that was around four o'clock on Friday. And so from three o'clock on Thursday to four o'clock on Friday, I had a girlfriend for a whopping 25, 25 hours. Yeah, I can do math. Um, 25 hours. (laughs) And so I get back on the bus, and we were on different buses, actually, and I was really upset, right? And I just thought that my world was crashing down in that moment, and I had my buddy next to me. His name was Kyle, and he was trying to cheer me up, and he was kind of asking me, what's going on, and why are you feeling this? why I feel this way because he didn't know yet. Um, and then finally I said to him that, you know, Jesse and I broke up and, and I turned back to the window and was just looking uh, as it was just a kind of a, you know, cloudy day and I was just feeling sad and whatnot. And he kept on trying to cheer me up. And then finally I just turned to him and I snapped. And I was just like, I was just like, Kyle, stop trying to cheer me up, man. I just feel lonely and I feel alone right now. And I just lost my girlfriend that I had. On, and I, I didn't even keep her for 25 hours and I had already lost her. And in that moment, I, I know that it did, it's, it's so small looking back on it, but in that moment, I felt alone. (laughs) In that moment, I felt more lonely than I ever had felt to lose my first ever girlfriend. Uh, If we're being honest, we all kind of have had these moments in our life where we have just felt alone right? We know what this feels like, and we're, we're, unfortunately, we're not strangers to it. And as it continues to happen in individual relationships in our life, and even with the coronavirus as a whole, and we keep feeling this lonely state, it continues to escalate. And lonely, lonely feeling alone can lead to being overwhelmed, to being anxious, and even depressed. Um, and some of you guys might already be there. Uh, some of you guys might already be feeling this uh, state of feeling overwhelmed and anxious and, and depressed, and, 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 and you don't want to feel this way, right? No one wants to feel overwhelmed. No one wants to feel anxious. No one wants to feel depressed, but we're in a cultural moment right now where there's a lot of fear, and there's a lot of anxiety, and there's a lot of overwhelmness, and there's a lot of depression, and we don't really know how to cope with it. Right? And so if we're being honest, the, we kind of ask the question, well, what in the world do we do about it? What in the world do we do with our loneliness? What in the world do we do with our feeling of uh, being overwhelmed or depressed even because I am kind of ready to break out of this state of the coronavirus and I'm kind of ready to just be normal again and life turn back to normalcy. Uh, but we might, not be, we're, we might not be quite there yet. And so what in the world do we do about it? In, in the state of loneliness and the time uh, of feeling this, what do we do? 
let's kind of talk about that a little bit today as we kind of dive into our text. So let me, let me kind of set the scene, though, of where we're going to go. So Jesus was uh, hanging out with his disciples, right? He, he journeyed with them for three years before he went to the cross. And right before he went to the cross, he, he hung out with them. In, in John chapter 16, he shared a bunch of last words. And I'm not sure if you were to have some last words with people, what you would share with them. But Jesus had a bunch of last words that he wanted to share with his disciples, and, and one of which was so incredibly profound, but also confusing to the disciples. John 16, he says, but in fact, it's best for you that I actually go away. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. It's actually the best thing for you if I step away. And they're kind of raising their eyebrow, ready to say, uh, Jesus, I don't think you're right. I don't think that's the right answer here. But he continues on and he says, because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I go away, then I will send him to you. And they're like, Jesus, what? You lost us, man. What in the world is it? The advocate. Well, in, in other texts of scripture, we see it as the Holy Spirit. We see him as the helper. We see him as the comforter. Well, what happens next is that, the, that Jesus did, did do exactly as he said he would do. He went to the cross, and he was beaten, and he was whipped, and he, and he died, and he died for three days. And in that moment, the disciples felt betrayed, and they felt lost, and they felt alone, and they were afraid, and they scattered, right? For three days, they, they just went all over the place, and they felt more alone than they ever had their entire lives because they thought that Jesus had abandoned them. And even in those moments when Jesus shared truth to them, they forgot it. They didn't hang on to it. They, they, they just could not remember what Jesus was saying because their fear gripped them so tightly. And so what happens next, right? Jesus ascends and he rises from the dead and he hangs out with the disciples for 40 days and he appears to 500 other people and he hangs out with them and, and they're just partying, they're hanging out, they're having a great time and they're just reconnecting with their friend and with their savior. But then Jesus says, I'm gonna ascend. And they're like, Jesus, what the heck, man? <laughs> You're, you, you, you died and you came back and now we're hanging out with you again and we love this and now you're saying you're going to have to leave uh, again? What is this? Why? And so in the book of Acts, uh, Jesus' uh, words are accounted for and here's what it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And he says, I have to go because the Holy Spirit must come and if I don't go, the Holy Spirit won't come. And so when he comes, you're going to receive power power like you never thought that you had. You're going to receive power that you didn't think was possible, and, and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so Jesus promised, saying the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, he's going to come and he's going to be present with you and he's going to empower you and he's going to enrich your life and he's going to sustain you and he's going to give you guidance and he's going to be able to commune with you and, and operate with you and talk with you and he's going to be your guiding strength when I go, when I ascend into heaven. So that's what happened, right? Jesus ascended. And then we know in the book of Acts, Acts chapter two, the Holy Spirit came and he indwelled in the believers there during that time in Jerusalem. But what's crazy and what's incredible is that that time when the Holy Spirit came was not just for the disciples, those 12 disciples, or for the people there in Jerusalem. It was for every single person, every single human being who calls on the name of Jesus, right? And so when Jesus promised an advocate who would give us power and be with us, that was true for everyone who would ever believe in the person of Jesus. And guys, this is a radical, game-changing, earth-shattering, transformative truth that we need to hold on to because in moments of anxiety, in moments of unsurety, in moments of stress, in moments of panic, in moments of feeling alone, we know, we can trust that God, the Holy Spirit, is with us, he's for us, he's through us, he's in us, he's all around us, and he's supporting us, and he's cheering us on. And so this is why we know that Easter means you're never alone. And this is kind of the eye-rolling moment that some of you might have, that you say, okay, oh, great, Tony, that's, that's so cool, thanks for letting me know, uh, because I didn't know that, um, and tell me something I don't know. Uh, or, you know what, Tony, that's great, but you you know what? I don't really see God. I don't really tangibly see God. It's kind of hard to process and talk to a God who I feel like my prayers are when I talk to him, it just bounces off of the walls and comes right back down. I feel like I don't actually have a, can see the power of God unless I can tangibly see him. And I get it because I've been there. 
done that, bought the t-shirt. I know that feeling. I know that feeling of, you know what, God, are you actually there? Are you actually present with me, God? Uh, are you really for me like you say you are? And so what would, what would that look like? And so the reality is, is that you can talk to the Holy Spirit. You can talk to God whenever you would like because the Holy Spirit is interceding for you and the Holy Spirit is empowering you. The Holy Spirit is guiding you, guys. I think that we so often neglect the, 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 the gifting and the beauty and the wonder of the Holy Spirit within us. I know that I'm guilty of that. Are you? The fact of the matter is that we can talk to God whenever we want because God is for us and dwelling us with us all the time. Despite your circumstances, despite coronavirus, he is all over the place. The coronavirus may be running rampant, but the Holy Spirit is running even more rampant all over the place with us, for us, all around us, and we can hold on to that. And, and so the reality is that, yeah, we can talk to him anytime, but also we need to realize that we're stronger than we think we are. And I'm not saying this to say, oh, yeah, yeah, you muster up your own strength, and I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is that we need to realize that we have a God power inside of us and his name is the Holy Spirit and his name is is willing to spend time with us and invest into us and empower us and equip us and, and guide us and he is going to do it because he's faithful. He's a faithful, a faithful God. You are stronger than you think you are. And when you think that your world is crumbling and when you think that anxiety is, you're going to give in to your anxiety and your fear and your temptation, you just need to lean in and hold on just a little bit more, just a little bit deeper into the person of the Holy Spirit because he will do it for you and he will guide you and he will hold you together. You are stronger than you think. There's a beautiful verse I want to direct our attention to. It kind of speaks to the Holy Spirit, but I think it's one that I kind of want to leave us with some encouragement here. Uh, in the book of Romans, Paul finishes up, is finishing up his letter, and he says this beautiful phrase, this beautiful verse, and it says, May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the God of hope fill you. May the God of joy fill you. May the God of peace fill you so that you may trust him more and more and more and more and more so that you may be overflowing with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Guys, this is what I pray over all of us at GSM. That's why I pray over all of us as Gateway Church. That's why I pray over all of us as uh, the big C church all over the world. What would it look like to live in the hope and the joy and the peace of God as we trust in him more and more and more so that the hope may overflow through our life and in a time that is kind of seemingly hopeless or a time that's really stressful, really anxious, what would it look like to be be a people, what would it look like to be Christ followers that would say, I'm going to live in the hope of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to live in the hope of Jesus. I'm going to live in the hope of God the Father, and I'm going to do it because he is glorious, and he is worth it, and I'm going to pursue him with everything I have, and I'm going to let my life overflow with hope. Man, what would that look like? <laughs> What does that look like even right now in your family, in your family context? So you can just let the love of Christ pour out into your family, pour out into your sphere of influence, maybe through the way that you connect over social media or the way you text your friends or that you call your loved ones or the way that you are you be Jesus to people when you have opportunities like your next door neighbors. Uh, what would it look like to be the church and be Jesus to people around you? It's the Holy Spirit that's filling you. It's the Holy Spirit that's guiding you. It's the Holy Spirit that is empowering you to do it. And so here's the kind of question I would ask is that how are you combating feeling alone? How are you combating it in the name of Jesus? How are you combating it by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the sovereignty of God the Father? How are you combating it? Because we're going to face, we're going to continue to face the temptations throughout the rest of our life of I feel alone or I am alone. What do I do in those moments? Are you going to cripple? Are you going to capitulate to despair? Or are you going to lean into the guidance of the Holy Spirit? Are you going to lean into the power of the Holy Spirit? Are you going to lean into the wonder and the giftings of the Holy Spirit? Because every Every single one of us are gifted by the Holy Spirit. Did you know that? You have spiritual gifts. How are you using your spiritual gifts? How are you using them to serve your family and your friends right now in this time? Because all we're trying, all we need to be doing is being Jesus to people and letting, uh, letting the coronavirus just fade away in light of the glory and the power and the wonder of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is going to allow you to do that. So how are you combating feeling alone? How are you speaking the truth of God's word over your life? What are you doing? I think it calls for us to take steps. It calls for us to take action, but you have to be willing to do it. But here's the thing, GSM, is that we're here for you. 
Because Easter means that you are never alone. You're never alone. Even if it feels like you're alone, please, please know that you are not alone. And if you are feeling alone, reach out to me. If you're feeling alone, reach out to your small group leader. We would love to be present for you, be with you, but also know at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that the Holy Spirit is there for you, empowering you, equipping you, and guiding you. And what are you doing to step into that realization every single day and make a conscious decision of I'm going to live like I'm not alone because I'm not. Because I'm not. Because the resurrection power of Jesus is present all over the place. So thank you guys for tuning in. You are loved and you are valued. Thanks for tuning in. God bless you.